So the Detroit Red Wings losing streak has now reached 12 games, the NHL record is 17 games, and just watching the way this team has been playing lately, honestly it doesn't look like they're going to win a game anytime soon. And only 2 out of those 12 losses are overtime losses, they're actually on a 10 game regulation losing streak. That is so awful, especially in today's NHL where it seems like on any given night any team can beat anybody, but Detroit is kind of just the joke of the NHL right now. I made a video talking about how they were the worst team in the NHL and just all the problems that I had with the team personally about a week ago and I didn't really think things could get any worse after that but they still haven't won a game since I've made that video and things have gotten a lot worse. This morning I seen a stat that really put this losing streak in perspective. There has been five coaches fired in the NHL since the Red Wings have last won a game but yet the coach of the team on a 12 game losing streak still has his job and it doesn't even really seem like he's on the hot seat and that kind of baffles me because even rebuilding teams if you lose 12 games in a row I think the coach should be gone. You got to change something up. But in the Red Wings case, I honestly think this is what they want to happen. I think Steve Yasman wants to tank and get the best chance at the number one overall pick because I really can't think of any other reason why Jeff Blasio would still be the head coach. It's not like he's Steve Yasman's guy. Yasman just came in recently as the GM. Ken Holland was the one that hired Blasio. So that is honestly kind of the biggest reason why I'm making this video. I want to talk about if the Detroit Red Wings are actually tanking on purpose and make sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think because honestly it's getting out of hand how bad this team has looked this is by far and away the worst hockey the red wings have played over the rebuild ever since they haven't been a playoff team especially last game against the winnipeg jets that was honestly one of the more difficult games i've ever had to watch as a red wings fan i actually had some high hopes heading into that game we had eric Comer getting his first start as a wing against the team that drafted him i thought detroit would put up a good performance in front of him and i actually thought Comrie had a good game even though he did allow five goals detroit just crumbled in the second period. They actually played a decent, you know, first 10 minutes of the hockey game. They were out shooting the Jets like 6-2 to two or something like that. But then, like I said, things just fell apart. It seems like there's just courses of a game where Detroit's mental strength just goes away and they just fall apart and let the other team blow the game wide open. When you look at the Detroit Red Wings roster on paper, at least when they're healthy, they are a team that shouldn't be this bad. You have some talented guys on the roster. The decor obviously is very bad. Jimmy Howard and Jonathan Bernie aren't having a good year either. But up front, you'd think they'd be scoring more goals than they have so far this season. They've struggled to put the puck in the net in a big way. You have guys like Robbie Fabry. He's actually been a bright spot of the season. He's been very good since coming over from St. Louis. You have Dylan Larkin, who's a guy who should be getting some offensive chances. Anthony Mantha, even though he's injured right now. Tyler Bertuzzi, Andreas Athanasiu, and man, Athanasiu, I don't know what's going on with him, but he's having an awful year. And then obviously we have Philip Zadina and Red Wings fans on Twitter. Basically over the past weeks have been very vocal on Philip Zadina, me included, because I honestly don't know what what the Detroit Red Wings are doing with him right now. They'll call him up, they'll put him in the lineup for a couple games, play him on the third line usually. He'll get some looks in the top six, but usually with guys like Phil Blow and Glenn Denning, he's never really had a consistent look on the top line. And then they'll send him back down to the AHL for a game, they'll call him back up, and then after last game against the Winnipeg Jets where Detroit got shelled, they sent him down, and then he got called back up again today, so I'm not sure if he'll be in the lineup tonight, but man, he has just been up and down all season. The poor kid probably doesn't even know what's going on. So honestly, my thoughts on Philip Sedina is just leave him in the American Hockey League because he was playing very well down there before calling him up or just keep him up in the NHL and put him in an opportunity where he can actually thrive offensively. Don't play him on like a checking line or a defensive line. That's not Philip Zadina's game at all. And if you're gonna put him on the power play, pass the puck to him a little bit. I remember they had a 5-on-3 against the Jets. He was over there winding up for the one-timer and every pass he got was in his feet. It was just an awful scene. So that's everything I really have to say about Philip Zadina. I don't want to talk about him too much because I know in the last video I made on the Red Wings a week ago, I talked about him a lot but now I want to talk about Jeff Blashill and like I said that's kind of the biggest reason I'm making this video and I'm not like a Jeff Blashill hater you never like to see people lose their job but I just really don't think he's the coach for this Red Wings team unless this is exactly what Steve Yasman wants and again that's the only thing I can think of right now an example I have again I'm going back to the Jets game I know I've been talking about that game a lot but it was just so awful Detroit had a power play with a fresh sheet of ice I believe it was to start the third period I don't think it was to start the second period and you would think with a fresh clean sheet of ice everyone fully energized you would put out your best guys out there on that power play but Jeff Blaschel iced a power play unit to start a period of Justin Abdelkader, Franz Nielsen and Valtteri Filppula. You know nothing against those guys but they're not the guys you should throw out there on the ice on a new power play to start a period with everybody you know fully energized if you want to get back in a game like those are the things that's been happening over this losing streak that just makes me question whether this team wants to win or lose. And let's say the Detroit Red Wings are tanking. Sure maybe that is the best move because 
Alexi Lafreniere or Quentin Byfield, one of the two would obviously be a huge difference maker for this team. You know, both of them looking like a potential franchise talent. But just because you're tanking doesn't guarantee you the number one overall pick. Look at the Colorado Avalanche. There's been two cases in which they had the best odds for the number one overall pick and ended up selecting fourth overall both times. They had that record-breaking, historically awful year, and they did end up drafting Kale McCarr fourth overall, who arguably could have been a number one pick in that draft. But you're not going to get a Kale McCarr fourth overall every time. I mean, it's just a pretty risky move by Detroit because you definitely could stunt the growth of some of your young kids having an awful season like this. And Detroit should definitely know too that the draft lottery isn't always too kind. Over the past two draft lotteries, Detroit has dropped a spot in both cases, and we ended up with Zadina and Moritz Sider, who I'm pretty happy about, but still, the draft lottery is honestly a big question mark, and I'm not really a believer in tanking. I personally think that you should ice the best team possible, put some of your young kids in a opportunity to succeed, and see what happens. If you suck, then you suck. Hopefully, the draft lottery can do wonders for you. But I'm honestly just super worried about this team, and we still have so many bad contracts. I know Steve Yasmin is a wonderful GM just based off of what he did with the Tampa Bay Lightning franchise, but he's got a lot of work to do, and maybe this is just all a part of his plan. And me being a Red Wings fan, I want to see the team compete, obviously. Yeah, Alexi Lafreniere, Quentin Byfield, or a top three pick in the draft would be nice and everything, but you never want to watch your team be completely awful. You know, maybe in the Connor McDavid draft, you know, you look at the Buffalo Sabres who were blatantly tanking for him, and they didn't even end up with Connor McDavid. They got the second overall pick and selected Jack Eichel, and obviously he is a superstar for them, but still, you never know what could happen, and I'm just not quite sure how I feel right now as a Red Wings fan. They do play against the Winnipeg Jets again tonight. I believe Athens CU isn't playing. I think Dylan Larkin is listed as doubtful too, so it's probably going to be a pretty rough game again, and I'm sure 13 losses in a row is on the way. So if there are any Red Wings fans watching this video, I'm sure there is a good amount of you guys. Make sure to let me know how you feel about what's going on with the team right now. Do you think tanking is the right move? And even if you're not a Red Wings fan, looking at it from the outside in, do you think they are tanking on purpose? Again, the fact that Jeff Blaschel is still head coach, I think that should be the answer. I think they are. But like I mentioned, I'm not sure how I feel about it because this season and this losing streak definitely has to be hard on a lot of players, you know, the young guys especially. But hopefully it all works out. I trust Steve Yeisman, but things are just so awful right now that I wanted to make this video and talk about it. Another thing I want to mention before I finish out the video, a buddy of mine, Audie James on Twitter, is selling off a lot of his NHL memorabilia. He used to have an NHL channel. He has retired from it since then, but a lot of his memorabilia he's selling is very good stuff, and it's actually some really good deals on it too. I bought a autographed Nick Ehlers puck off him for like $25 or something. So with the holiday season's coming around, if you guys want to get a gift for someone who collects hockey memorabilia, this is definitely the place to go, so make sure to go check him out on Twitter. So with all that being said, that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Again, make sure to let me know down down in the comment section below. Do you guys think the Detroit Red Wings are tanking on purpose or are they just that bad? So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy today's video, feel free to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content and I will see you guys all in tomorrow's video.